Welcome. In this video we're going to discuss surface integrals of vector fields and we're going to take the approach as we did with line integrals in a previous video and try to view this as a special case of a surface integral of an appropriate scalar function. All right, we'll talk about what that scalar function will be in a moment. Before we do, let's just review how we evaluate a surface integral of a scalar function. We have it in the box here. We use a parameterization all right, and the formula is f of r of u v so that's the point on the surface times the length of the cross product of the vectors with the partial derivative of the parameterization with respect to u cross the partial derivative of the parameterization with respect to v those are both tangent vectors to the curve all right and we're assuming we're talking about a smooth surface where that partial derivative where the cross product of those partial derivative vectors is non-zero one thing we noted before was that the surface integral of a scalar function does not depend on the parameterization. When we go to talk about a surface integral of a vector field, the parameterization will be important. So for us to view a surface integral of a vector field as a surface integral of a scalar function, an appropriate scalar function, we have to choose the parameterization carefully. All right, it's going to have to line up with the surface, much like we saw for um, vector fields of or line integrals of vector fields in cur over curves. Okay, so looking at this picture, we can a lot of times think about um, the force or the yeah, the field F representing a velocity of a fluid. And we think about a, a fluid flow problem where we want to know how much fluid is crossing over a, a specified surface. What we want to measure, it turns out, is the net effect of the vector field in the normal direction. All right, so what we're going to be measuring is if we have our, four, our, our vector field at capital F, we've got our unit normal vector n here. What's going to be important for us is the normal component of the vector field, and therefore we're going to take the portion of the vector field that lies normal to the surface, and we do that by taking a dot product. Remember that dot product is related to vector projection. All right, so that's how we're what we're going to be focusing on is the normal component of the vector field relative to the surface. All right, looking at the definition we see from the textbook, if we have a continuous vector field, capital F, with a domain that contains the oriented surface, and we'll talk about what that means in a moment, then the surface integral is defined as such. Again, this is more of a notation on the left side of this, and this is how to define it on the right side, and notice that is going to be a scalar quantity there. To, um, with respect to surface area. All right, so now we're going to delve into what it means to be an oriented enable surface or an oriented surface. All right, for the scalar integral, again, we're going to look at that dot product of the vector field with the normal vector along the surface. But it turns out not all surfaces have a well-defined nor unit normal vector n. All right. It, for it to be well defined, the surface must be what we call orientable. An orientable surface is one that has two distinct sides to it. All right. I'm going to jump over to the textbook, the, unit, the OpenStax textbook for a minute, just to give you a picture of the classic example of a non-orientable surface, which is called a Mobius strip. If you take a piece of paper, and it, as it's indicated in the figure here, if you take that piece of paper, twist it, and then kind of glue it together or tape it together, you'll have a surface that only has one side. So if you start drawing a line on one, on you know, grab the piece of paper and draw the line, and if you just keep kind of connecting it along there, eventually you're going to end up meeting the line again. All right, versus a given surface uh, that's orientable, we can draw a line on one side and not see that on the other side. That will not happen for the Mobius strip. All right, so some surfaces in three space are orientable, some are not. All right, some have two sides, two well-defined sides, some do not. We can only talk about surface integrals of vector fields for orientable surfaces. Okay, now when we do that, the unit normal vector all right, can point to one side of the surface or another. So again, we think about we have some surface in three-dimensional space, and again, clearly there we have a outer direction, and we can point into a different direction with the with an opposite normal vector, maybe pointing downwards. We've got a you know outer or inner or upper or uh, up 
upward or downward vector, normal vector there. All right, given a parametric description of the surface that we look at the parameterization R, um, we're going to have the following conventions that we talk about all right, for the parameterization and how it relates to the normal vector. All right, so if we have a parameterization R of UV, so we're thinking about U being the first component of the parameterization, V being the second component, then the conventions that we make are that we, we say that the unit normal vector, which is given by the, that cross product to normalize, will point in the positive direction. All right, all right, that's the positive orientation. All right, let's just talk about that for a minute here. Let me go back up to and, and redraw. Let me just do it actually on the on the surface we had in the previous page. So if we think about these trace lines coming from the parameterization here of R of U, then at a given point, the partial derivative vectors with respect to U and then separately with respect to V at the point, those derivative vectors will be tangent to the curve. All right, and if they're both tangent to the curve, they're tangent to the surface, and if we take the cross product, that would be a vector perpendicular to both of those vectors, and therefore that cross product vector will be perpendicular to the surface. It'll be parallel to the normal vector. All right, so going back, we're going to use these conventions. If, we give, if we're given a parametric description of a surface, all right, that, that's going to determine the orientation of it if we assume that uh, the partial with respect to U cross the partial with respect to V is the positive direction, and it's opposite when we reverse the cross product. All right, so notice in the numerator here, we have the cross product reversed. That will point in the opposite direction when we reverse the cross product. That's the negative direction. Now, if we're given an oriented... If we're given the orientation of a surface, we're going to have to cook up or find a, par a parametric description to match that orientation. So we're going to have to choose that appropriately by, by choosing U and V appropriately. Okay, continuing on, all right, so the, the idea for this derivation is that we're essentially going to take this expression that we have here for N, and we're going to substitute it in that dot product. All right, that's what's going to happen all right, for us to derive the formula for evaluating a surface integral of a vector field over a, sur of a vector field. That's it, the surface integral of a vector field. All right, so continuing on here, let's go to that derivation. All right, so here's the assumption we're going to be making. We're given a surface with a specified orientation, right, an outside and an inside or upper, upwards or downwards, whatever it might be. And we need to determine a parameterization that has a positive orientation matching the orientation of the surface. And that is done by choosing U and V appropriately. All right, if it doesn't match with the initial choice, maybe you need to reverse them. Then what we'll have is that that unit normal vector can be expressed in terms of the parameterization. So when we look at the scalar function f dot n, capital F dot n, we think about that as a scalar, because that's a dot product and it's going to give us a number. Let's substitute that expression in for n, and we're going to express f dot in, n in for little f. So continuing down below, let's go through and derive the formula. All right, so we're just going to directly substitute this in uh, to what we have learned before, uh, how to evaluate a line a surface integral of a scalar function. So this is the formula from the previous video that we derived. Now what we're going to do is substitute into this double integral the expression F, capital F, of R of U dot N. All right, and then that's going to be multiplied by the partial derivative. All right, I'm just going to use this subscript notation for the partial derivatives just to make that quicker to write. Now what we're going to do is um, plug in n as the cross product vector normalized. All right, so substituting that in, what do we end up getting? Just rewriting here. We've got f of r of u v dotted with, this is going to be the partial derivative with respect to u, cross the partial derivative with respect to v, normalized, so divide that vector by its own length. All right, that's a that is the unit normal vector that points outward to the surface, and then we're multiplying it by the length of that cross product. That came from uh, our previous work on 
the surface integral of a scalar function. And like we saw with line integrals, a similar thing is going to happen now. We can distribute the scalar into the dot product and cancel out those magnitudes. So rewriting this one more time now, we get that we have the double integral over the region R of vector field evaluated at R of uv, dotted now with this cross product vector. And we're integrating that with respect to area. So that's a scalar quantity via that dot product, and then we're going to integrate that with respect to area. All right, and we'll look at the summarized result in the box on the next page. But one thing to notice is that there's no magnitudes in the formula anymore. So that takes out one thing. And like line integrals, sometimes it's easier to evaluate a surface integral of a vector field because we don't have to deal with that um, magnitude. All right. But again, this is showing us how we can view the line or the surface integral of a vector field as an appropriate surface integral of a scalar function where we're assuming in this case right that that what we have is the, the scalar function we're talking about is f dot n all right so there's some assumptions made there that we're assuming we can choose the parameterization so that it lines up with the orientation of the surface okay so there we go. If we have a continuous vector field whose domain contains the smooth orientable surface S with outer unit normal vector n, then if we want to comp evaluate that line integral of that vector field, or the, sorry, I said that wrong, the surface integral of that vector field is denoted with the notation on the left side, we compute it with a double integral on the right side. So we pull this problem back via the parameterization R of uv. All right, but we are making the assumption that the domain R capital R is the domain of the parameterization the UV plane and then the, and that we're choosing the parameterization R of UV appropriately so that it has a positive orientation lining up with the unit outward normal vector. All right we'll see some examples in other videos of how to evaluate surface integrals of vector fields. One thing I just want to mention uh, for this in terms of terminology sometimes we refer to you're going to see this done in multiple cases uh, in other references. We refer, we refer to this as the flux integral. All right, so that's the flux, and flux uh, is coming from the Latin flow. It's, it's related to the, the Latin word for flow. So we think about that as the flow integral. Again, if we're thinking about fluids, we're thinking about the flow across the surface, and that's what that is quantifying. That, that surface integral is quantifying that. All right, that'll be it for this video.